Thanks for visiting our travel channel, The Earthly Odyssey. Like and subscribe if you wish to see more of our videos. Our first adventure, four days in Athens, okay. Greece. I look into your eyes and see you fade away. I'm Dev, and this is my husband Pete. We love to travel and experience new cultures all over the world. We want to thank our fellow YouTubers for inspiring us in the links below. This is our first time doing a travel video. Please forgive any newbie errors, and most certainly to the Greeks out there, forgive our mispronunciations. We arrived at the Athens airport in the afternoon on our first day. We recommend taking the train from the airport. It's inexpensive and easy to use. Like other large European cities, buying tickets is easy and you could easily switch to English. Once you have your ticket, it's as easy as swiping your card to enter the station. But be sure to keep that ticket because you'll need it to exit. We checked into our Airbnb in the Ghazi neighborhood of Athens within walking distance of one or two stops from the historical attractions of the city. We stayed in a very nice studio apartment with a small bathroom, a full kitchen, and a nice living space, and a wonderful balcony. After a short nap from our long flight over, we went out exploring. We didn't plan too much the first day. Pete was busy Google mapping our path to the heart of the old city on foot. On our way there, we enjoyed a sunny late afternoon. The Ghazi area used to be industrial, but now has begun to gentrify, and now is the center of nightlife, especially on the weekends. Keramiekos is a site of an ancient graveyard. There is also a museum on the site we didn't get a chance to go to. Athens is home to a very large stray cat population that are taken care of by the locals. They're everywhere, but very numerous in tourist areas near restaurants, of course, where they can catch a quick meal. After a leisurely walk about half an hour, we were at the edge of the Plaka neighborhood, the old center of the ancient city. It's now charming, but also a buzz of tourist activity. In the fall, and with limits on our travel due to COVID, the crowd didn't seem too bad at all. It's one of those places where the charm outweighs any negatives, as there are plenty of nice shops and restaurants. Hadrian's Library and the Roman Forum date from after the Roman conquest of Athens. There are literally ruins everywhere you look in this part of the city. Monastiraki Square is the centerpiece to the area and has magnificent views of the Acropolis on the hill above. After a few hours of getting our bearings, we were ready for dinner at a nice restaurant. It was good, traditional Greek fare. Never forget the Greek salad, of course, and the wine. I had sea bass, Pete had chicken. Delicious. Not bad for our first dinner in Athens. On our second day, we began with a planned food tour of Athens. We booked our time with the Hidden Food Gems Tour of Athens, done by Julia. She grew up in the neighborhood, and we cannot recommend her enough. Here we're sampling Borgasta, a Greek custard pastry.
The aroma of the herbal street market hit us a block away. It's so fresh and divine. Personally, I've never been a fan of olives, but Julia changed my mind by the immense variety of olives grown in Greece. She then took us to a restaurant where she made us some tzatziki, a dish made with strained yogurt, cucumbers, and olive oil, with another with grated tomatoes and goat cheese. We ended our visit here with a variety of spiced meats, and yes, more cheese. Continuing our food tour, and who knew the Greeks also eat snails just like the French? On to the fish market. I have to admit, I adore Halloween. It's one of my favorite times of year. We ran into this spooky setup on our way back to our Airbnb. On our third day, we hired a guide for our tour of the Acropolis and the Acropolis Museum. Ours was a history and architecture specialist. Here's the Theater of Dionysus, the oldest theater in the world. The Temple of Asclepius was dedicated to the God of Healing. The Odeon was actually built by the Romans after they conquered Greece. It is still in use today for live music concerts. Further up, what used to be part of a long set of stone stairs leading up to the Acropolis was mostly destroyed by the Turks. This may seem crowded, but our tour guide assured us this is only about half of what he usually sees this time of year. The Propylia is the main entrance to the temple complex of the Acropolis. The Parthenon is the largest temple on top of the Acropolis that dates from the 5th century BCE. Also at the top is the Temple of Athena Nike and the Temple of Athena Poleus all dedicated to Athens' patron goddess, Athena. The views from the Acropolis were spectacular, and although it was a windy day, it was still very pleasant. On our fourth and last day in Athens, we spent time at two museums, the Bernacki Museum, a mansion of a wealthy Athenian that donated his house and art to the public, and the National Archaeological Museums, 
There's just too much to show, and we didn't do any videos, unfortunately. This is just a sampling of what they have to offer. Both places were easy to navigate and not overwhelming at all. I highly recommend them. On to Mount Lesebetus. 2021 marks the 200th anniversary since Greek independence from the Ottomans. And every sunset, the military lowers the flag in commemoration. Also, at Athens' highest point, this is just the greatest place to get a sunset. The sunset did not disappoint. It's a wonderful way to say goodbye to this wonderful city and country of Athens, Greece. But we weren't quite done yet. Our last meal in Athens was a real treat. The food just kept coming and coming. The drinks included was only 30 US dollars. Athens does not disappoint. Our short time was up, and it was only a small taste, and we promised ourselves we'd come back. The next day, we were on the train back to the airport. Thanks so much for joining us. Please like and subscribe to see our future videos. I promise the quality will improve. Leave your comments and suggestions below. A special thanks once again to those YouTubers that inspired me to create this channel. I am so, so grateful.